I've reached a stage where medicine can't do anything anymore. This is no longer my life. It's not normal to have to go to Belgium or Switzerland to die. It's horribly stressful. This is without a doubt a question of ethics, a moral question, but also a question of society, of our approach to our own death. Welcome to a new edition. I'm Nadia Shabi, and this week we're putting the focus on a delicate issue, euthanasia. The good death, as it translates from the Greek, has yet to be legalised here in France. This despite an overwhelming majority of citizens supporting the move. But a year away from the next presidential poll, MPs are piling the pressure on Emmanuel Macron to bring about a breakthrough. Before we look into that, though, let's get an overview of the legal and social evolutions and the high-profile cases that have fuelled the debate here. There are several legal definitions for euthanasia. First is passive euthanasia, which is allowing the patient to die by stopping treatment. Next is active euthanasia. The medical team gives a drug to cause death. Finally, there's assisted suicide, in which the patient himself takes the lethal dose. Since 2005, here in France, the Leonetti law regulates end-of-life medical care. It prohibits disproportionate therapeutic interventions. With the patient's consent and in consultation with colleagues, allows doctors to decide to stop treatment. The law was amended in 2016 to allow the use of deep and continuous sedation for terminally ill patients. The legislation came about because of the tragic case of Vincent Humbert. In September 2000, the young fireman was in a serious car crash that left him paralyzed from the neck down, blind and mute, but mentally lucid. He managed to compose a letter stating his demand to die and sent it to Jacques Chirac, the president at the time, who refused his request. Following the family's wishes, Humbert's doctor illegally caused his death in September 2003. Both the doctor and Humbert's mother were charged and then released three years later. A few years after that, another case galvanized the right to die debate, that of Vincent Lambert, a quadriplegic in a vegetative state since 2008. His doctors decided to stop treatment in 2013 after a request from his wife and some siblings. But Vincent's mother and father, devout Catholics, opposed it leading to years of legal battles. Vincent died in July 2019, a few days after his treatment was stopped. His case revealed deep disagreements over end-of-life medical care in France. While President Emmanuel Macron has not stated a position, MPs have forged ahead, introducing four bills to improve end-of-life rights since the start of the year. analysis. I'm joined now by sociologist Philippe Bataille, who's worked extensively on this issue. Hello, thank you for being with us. Bonjour. Since January, multiple proposals uh, have been presented to Parliament, including one by President Macron's own camp. Uh, meanwhile, the COVID pandemic has also put the spotlight uh, on terminally ill patients and the treatment of terminally ill patients. So might the timing be right for a breakthrough now? I think this is a good time to restart a parliamentary discussion and to put to a vote the issue of medically assisted death, precisely in order to resolve the status quo in the current emergency context. We must recognize the serious trauma people are experiencing in nursing homes and hospitals. It's an exceptional health situation. But it didn't bar Spain or more recently Italy to take into account the situation of those who are desperately seeking aid to die. Et qui réclame une aide à mourir. And on the 2017 campaign trail, Emmanuel Macron uh, said that personally he would want to choose how he ends his life, but simultaneously he refused to commit to tackling this issue. His predecessor had vowed to address it, but then never did. Why are French presidents so faint-hearted about euthanasia? Most French presidents do not keep all their campaign promises once they come to power. 
And that's why your question is pertinent, because it wasn't just François Hollande who committed to evolving the law towards allowing medically assisted death in France. Five or six other candidates also made the same proposal. And we have to admit that during François Hollande's time in office, between his election and 2016, the law did evolve, introducing deep sedation without awakening. But it's absolutely not the same thing as euthanasia or assisted suicide. That's what's lacking in the law, in order to eventually choose deep sedation without awakening, without first being refused medically assisted death. There are multiple possible choices, but today it's difficult to make the law evolve because there is always this suspicion that sedation is euthanasia or assisted suicide, both forbidden by law. Well, given that a majority of French citizens support euthanasia, and this is a secular state, what or who are the forces that are lobbying against it? The singularity of the situation in France today is linked to medical corporatism and especially to the voice of this medical corporatism that tends to quickly speak about its responsibility, morality, subjectivity and conscience. At the National Assembly, where these doctors are strongly represented, lawmakers tend to think they need to protect French society from a cultural evolution which would have an adverse effect and which would force doctors to respond to uncontrolled demands from individuals. That's mere fantasy. Nobody wants to do that. We simply need the support of all to respond to one person's distress, and that's called a law. And he who needs that law needs the right to be heard. What is needed in France today is that the opinion of the vast majority in favor of active aid to die in dignity is turned into a law. A law that would not be a compromise, but one which respects a person's fundamental rights. Well, for those French citizens who feel that euthanasia is the only way forward, there is only one option, and that is to travel abroad. Our reporters went to find out more. No longer able to move around, Alain has rearranged his bedroom to make his life as easy as possible. He's been suffering from a rare disease for at least 35 years. I'm a prisoner in my own bed, so my living space is very small. This is no longer my life. Every day, doctors, nurses, physiotherapists and caregivers rotate at Alain's bedside. OK, in five minutes I'll give you your pill. Over the last two years, Alain's condition has worsened significantly. At 58, he can't even go out in a wheelchair. It's too painful even to sit down. I've reached a stage where medicine can't do anything anymore. It doesn't soothe my pain, or at least only slightly. If you had an electric shock starting from the cerebral cortex that then spread and burned throughout your body every two seconds, that's what I experience, among other things. Last autumn, Alain wrote to President Emmanuel Macron asking for help in dying with dignity in his own country. But active euthanasia is illegal in France. Alan hopes to travel to Switzerland to seek assisted suicide as soon as possible, a plan he talks about freely with his caregiver. If we can keep you alive with this, that would be good. Yes, well, I wish to go as soon as possible and you know it. You still have time. It's going to be a while yet, especially with this pandemic and this damn virus, unfortunately. It's a kind of situation that Anne Vivian is all too familiar with. You know, it's not any easier to go to Switzerland at the moment. A volunteer at the Association for the Right to Die with Dignity, she regularly talks to seriously ill people who want to put an end to their suffering. 
C'est pas normal qu'on soit obligé. It's not normal to have to go to Belgium or Switzerland to die. It's horribly stressful to have to leave one's country with one or two other family members and go to die elsewhere. It's terrible. C'est terrible, terrible. A former anaesthetist and intensive care physician, Vivian says the law must evolve. Deep terminal sedation can last days and even weeks, whereas with active aid in dying, by administering the drug which will trigger death in a few minutes, everyone is aware, the family and the patient. And they can say anything they want beforehand, and they can change their minds at the last minute. It's aid that Alain is ready to take without hesitation. Oh, yes. Even if they tell me in a quarter of an hour. I'm very clear on this. I've chosen my path. For now, Alain is continuing his fight for the right to die, both for himself and others. So, Philippe Bataille, might a Swiss-style assisted suicide approach be the next step for France? Very probably assisted suicide, because the term euthanasia remains too strong and difficult. For me, the law needs to evolve around other aspects, such as including a conscious clause for doctors that would allow them to pull back. I also see the law not to rule out specific limits, such as age, health condition, the level of disability, closeness to death determined by a physician, etc. All that should remain the subject of debate in society, and such a debate would engage the public to draw their attention to a problem that is affecting many of our people and which French people want to address. And is it surprising to you that the self-proclaimed nation of human rights isn't able to deliver on a right to die with dignity? It's a matter of time, a matter of timing. I think it's going to take four to five years, and the issue will be addressed at the next presidential election in a year's time. Thank you very much, Philippe Bette. Thank you. And with that, we leave this edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to France 24. At the end of September 2020, Azerbaijan launched a lightning war which left thousands dead in Nagorno-Karabakh. Within six weeks, the predominantly Armenian enclave had suffered a crushing defeat and large territorial losses. Today, how are the people of Karabakh coping with the trauma? And what role is being played by Russia, which sponsored the ceasefire? France 24 has been to Nagorno-Karabakh to find out. Reporters, presented by Mark Owen on France 24 and France24.com.